to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. It's Ebro, Laura Rosenberg on the line today on the interview. We're talking to large professor, the legend, the mad scientist, and Jeremy, the, sk the skate culture doc, Laura, you was telling me about. Tell me, tell me more yeah, about this documentary. It's called All the Streets Are Silent, The Convergence of Hip-Hop and Skateboarding Between 1987 and 1997. Yo, Jeremy, oh. tell, tell, tell me how this came together for you. And then we got to talk about Large Professor doing this music, because I know that's exciting for everybody. Yeah, it started, uh, the idea first started when Eli Gessner did uh, Handstyle for one of my skate videos in 2012. 2013 and you know he made he famously made uh the skate video mixtape and founded zoo york in 93 and he was sitting on a you know a, this like archival gold um and so we negotiated that if i were to catalog his archive and digitize it that i would maybe be able to you know make a story out of it um, so that's, yeah, that's sort of how it first came about. Well, this whole thing is near and dear to my heart because, you know, growing up in Northern California, skate, you know, graffiti, break dancing, MCing, DJing, the whole, all the street culture went hand in hand, you know, and I know downtown New York City for sure. A uh, large pro, when they reached out Yo. to you for this, I know you lived this and you remember yes. the skate kids in the city. Uh, you know, just talk yeah. about that experience uh, in and around New York about the convergence of all these street cultures that were happening at that late 80s, early 90s. Nah, that was a beautiful time because you had dudes like Harold Hunter, Vinnie Ponte, you know, all of the guys out there, um, you know, listening to hip hop while they were skating. It was cool, man. It was, you know, and just for these guys to come in and say like, yo, man, we want you to represent what it is because I never did. Uh, um, away from what that was, you know, that, that whole vibe of, you know, just some raw beats and things like that, because that, that's just hand-in-hand -hand with skating, man, like, especially from that time. So I just kind of kept it to that vibe, and, you know, it's just what it is, man. Like, yo, that's that's something that don't you know, really change, you know, like, you keep them on your beats, you hear it to this day, like, streams force, you hear the, the, the ill beats playing, like, you don't really hear it too much trap and things like that. So, you know, it was a good thing when they reached out. Yo, even right now, a lot of the cats that are, are running things in skate, um, what's the kid that runs with Earl Sweatshirt, Rosenberg? Who, Navy who, Blue? Navy Blue. Yo, Navy Blue is an L skater, pro skater, MC. His beats, he stays with the hard beats and the underground Rubble, shit. You know, yeah. large pro, like the underground, like skate culture is always wants to stay underground and stay in the street. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. So now nah, it's, it's, it's cool, man. It's, the movie is dope, too, man. We got some legends in there, man. We got Huff. We got a bunch of people, man. We got like the making of Supreme, New York, man. We got Eli Morgan Gessner, man. Wow. It's, it's oh, so it ties together, all man. into it. It's the fashion. It's the culture. It's the whole. It's it's the hip hop. Yeah, um, it's, it's everything. And it's, Large I mean, Pro, Mars, you... you know, revolving around Mars. We got Clark Kent, crazy footage of Jay Z, like early footage of Jay Z, like way before everything. Like it's it's that time period that people want to know about, like the origins. Definitely. And 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 Large Pro, how how could you describe exactly what you did musically for the film? Take us through that part of it. Musically, I mean, just looking at those times, it's like, oh man, that's when this song was out or when this beat was out, and so it was just like, I mean, with the help of Jeremy, like we we sat down and went through some beats because, like I said, I never really veered away from that, you know, that that feel of that beats, gritty you know, sound. Like, Right. Yeah, man, that gritty sound. So it was like, all right, this would be good for that. You know, it was just a matter of just putting it to uh, putting it to video now, you know. And, I mean, even the opening scene, oh, man, like, we got this bridge scene where this beat comes on and it just fits perfectly with the business of the city. Like, that's that's me. Like, the, the city, New York, it's, it's in New York, so that's, that's me all day. So it was, it was just a, a good experience doing it for video now yeah. now jeremy oh go ahead Laura. Uh, jeremy talk about uh, acquiring this footage of a teenage jay-z or a young buster rhymes like where the hell did you find this yeah so it was a the busta was shot by eli uh at stretch and bob's uptown but the jay-z was really like a, a crazy moment because we had already cataloged 
thousands of Yuki Watanabe's tapes, the founder of Marg Nightclub on 13th Street. And he had, I think, you know, we used to do like tape to tape editing, but I don't even think that was what it was. It was basically like he made a highlight reel or maybe his wife made a highlight reel of some, some events at Mars. And it was all laid to like one of the background tracks that they were playing at the club. And I saw like one or two seconds of Jay-Z on the mic. And I knew it was I knew it was him like right away. And I asked Yuki about it. He's like, no, 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 Jay-Z wasn't, he never came to Mars because I guess he didn't film it. His wife filmed it with his camera because he didn't know who he was, you know? And on the tape, <laughs> wow. on the tape, it said, uh, on the tape it said New York street style rap and then like all Japanese under it, you know? Oh, wow. wow. So, like, that was a crazy moment because just seeing like one or two seconds of him in that mix, I knew that the other tape existed. So it was just a matter of finding that. And then it was getting the audio through a series of uh, a lot of trial and error to try and make it sound as good as it was, you know, uh, at the time of the recording. When does this documentary uh, drop and where can people watch it when it's available? So it comes out Friday, July 23rd, and that's uh, nationwide in theaters. Um, select theaters, and then September 7th on digital platforms uh, worldwide. Um, take us, Jeremy. You said uh, in the beginning that you were filming a lot of street culture and a lot of street things that were videos that were taking place in New York back in the day. So you were, you were, uh, were you around in the 90s when this stuff was happening, Jeremy, or are you just putting this, this you found this footage and are making this moment happen? So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm only 34. I mean, I started making skate videos in 99, 2000. And so I had already missed that, that era for sure. But my brother who's 48 is a DJ and a skater. And he kind of, you know, through him and also my sister introduced me to a lot of the people in the scene and at a very early age. So I was, I was going to Supreme and getting a t-shirt in like 1998, you know? So I sort of, it was like, it's like this golden like childhood memory for me. So in terms of going through the footage, it was like, you know, it was like a kid in a candy store. It was super organic and just easy and, and a dream to, to make the project. Well, and I'm not sure everybody even knows how much Supreme, you know, I think DJ Enough did the first Supreme like launch party in like mm -hmm. 96 or something like mm -hmm. that. And I don't even know if people know that Huff, you know, the brand Huff that everybody rocks now, Huff Nagel was coming out of New York and moved to the Bay and started kind of his own movement out there. So I don't even know if people understand how intertwined hip hop, skate, New York City, and all of that street culture was. I don't know if that's actual. Do you feel like that's been told well, large, large professor, until this moment? Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, I mean, because they had the videos. You know, they had skate videos. They, you know, just underground joints. But I think this is going to be the best, like, just display of it all. Like, I mean, because we're going through fashion, we're going through hip hop. Just everything. So I think this will be the best display of it all, definitely. And and will your music be accessible? Like, will the music that is like the music inspired by or the mo is this soundtrack going to be on streaming services? These instrumentals, like, what will people be able to get to these? Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We gonna have it on Spotify and all of that stuff. You know, we just yo, we want we want the movie though. You know, first and foremost, we want to concentrate on the movie and get that out there and just. Let the people get that. I mean, coming out of COVID and everything, we just want people to get the experience and just to represent the city. You know, we're just trying to get that out there first and foremost. Make sure the story gets told. What's the name again, Laura Stout? I mean, listen, this movie has amazing people in it. All the streets are silent. We have They have interviews with Rosario Dawson, uh, Clark Kent, Kid Capri, Fab Five Freddy. Uh, and it, the list goes on and on. It's a beautiful moment that, that I think a lot of people have heard of. But this is your chance to kind of experience like a piece of that time. So I, I think everyone should go and support this film. It's called All the Streets Are Silent. And before we let you go, Extra P, I got to ask you, man. Um, obviously, as you and I know very well, this DJ world and culture is small. And, um, you know, Biz is a huge loss for everyone. And I'm sure you have memories of him from the early hip hop days. And then also as the years went on in the DJ game. So, number one, I wanted to pass on my, my condolences and also see if you had any story, st stories you wanted to share about the late, great Biz. Oh, man, Biz, man. Like, my first opportunity of 
my mentor Paul C, who lent me a drum machine early in the game, like this guy was so in demand that he like had to take a break from the drum machine. And he was like, yeah, you take this drum machine for two weeks and see what you come up with because he taught me, you know, what buttons to press and everything like that. So I took the drum machine out of that little time that I had the drum machine, uh, made the beats called Intelligent Hoodlum. Uh, there was a few other joints I did the, uh, the remix for Illegal Search for LL. A few early 90s joints. Yeah. But first call that I got from Paul C was, no, come to the studio now. Bismarck likes some of the beats that you made. Mm. And it's funny because I just spoke to DJ Cool V and he has all the tapes intact and everything. So I ran to the studio and that was the first person who ever liked one of my tracks with Biz. It was, um, I had like chop some reggae joint up and he, you know, when I went to the studio, he was like, yo, man, you made a beat, man, yo, you're going to be you special, man. Like, yo, this is, this is, and so, I mean, you know, been throughout the years, always, always supported and, and just gave good vibes. And, you know, I, I love that brother. And, uh, you know, just going to carry on tradition. Like, he, he blessed me with a few words on video, just all kinds of things, man. This, this was a blessing to this world. Mm, well said. Thanks, P. Yo, uh, Large Professor, thank you for your time. What's I know, up? I know, uh, you know, you ain't always out here doing interviews and doing all that, but I'm sure you got amazing stories. And anytime we can have you on, it is a pleasure. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Yes, sir, my man. Sir. Yo, and, and Jeremy, thank you, man, for putting in this work, man, to, to bring these stories together. You know what I mean? As a kid, you know, I was one of them. I was one of them kids that was skating and listening to hip hop. And you know, we was kind of like, as hip hop became a mainstream thing, it took. I think it took really for like Pharrell to bring it back. You know, where the BMX and the skating was also on the scene with the fashion and 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 the rhymes and the DJing and graffiti. But thank you for telling this story, man. Yeah, thank you guys. This is. Uh, I hope that uh, people can make it out to the theater and see it on a big screen. There it is, man. Yeah, supported. All the streets are silent. Out. Take care, Friday. fellas. Thank you, guys. Out Friday. Peace. Peace. Peace.